In 2017, Mazda committed to investing nearly two billion US dollars. This is a small car company, so this was a huge, huge percent of its revenue on a new version, a new improved version of its Sky Active engine. It said that its Sky Active technology would beat off challenges from electric cars and it would save the combustion engine by revolutionizing gasoline technology. Well, Mazda also promised that in 2022, they would sell 2 million cars and use this technology to revive the company. Now they're saying that in 2030, only 25% of the cars they sell worldwide will be electrified. They claim that they will continue to invest into Skyactiv internal combustion engine technology and they will somehow save the petrol gasoline engine as a result. Clearly that is what they will need to do in order to sell 75% of their cars in 2030 as internal combustion engine models only. Here is the story of Mazda's epic investment in the gasoline engine and how it failed on an epic level. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. Great to see you, thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. In 2017, Mazda committed to investing a couple of billion dollars into a better version of its Skyactiv engine technology. This is essentially just their marketing term for more efficient engines. Now, this may not sound like a lot of money, but for a small company like Mazda that only produces about a million cars a year, it was a huge investment. Many thought it was a mistake, but Mazda was very confident that it wouldn't be. Mazda made a splash by putting its semi-compression ignition or Skyactiv X engine into production versions of its Mazda 3 and CX-30. So why is no one actually buying the cars with this new technology? Because basically no one is, and Mazda has admitted to that fact. Considering that Mazda believes this technology is completely groundbreaking and revolutionary, which in some ways it should have been, it just didn't pan out that way. Now, despite massive difficulties, Mazda did manage to build a production-ready compression ignition gasoline engine called the Skyactiv X. Unlike previous attempts, it includes a spark plug in a creative hack that they call Spark Controlled Compression Ignition, or SPCCI. When running in this mode, the engine runs an incredibly lean air to fuel mixture on the order of 29 to one. It's kind of like a gone in 60 seconds or like Fast and the Furious where you see them pressing the go baby go button, forcing massive amounts of air into the engine and just praying it doesn't melt down from all the incredible heat. It's kind of a similar concept in a way. Now the engine was running so lean that even the engine's high compression ratio of 16 to one apparently won't cause the mixture to combust. When the piston is reaching the top of the compression stroke, a small amount of extra fuel is injected right next to the spark plug. This localized richer mixture is ignited by the spark plug with the combustion causing an increase of pressure in the cylinder. This added pressure then causes the rest of the engine this added pressure then causes the rest of the mixture to undergo compression ignition. The result, a gasoline engine that can run at a higher compression ratio with a much leaner air to fuel mixture than is traditionally possible. The target ratio is so lean that a low pressure supercharger is used as a pump to supply more air to the combustion chamber. Now the idea behind this was to massively decrease fuel consumption, improve engine performance, and decrease emissions. The SPCCI regime is incredibly efficient, well, was meant to be, but it didn't quite turn out that way. Now, the thing is, with a compression ratio of 16 to one, this would normally be difficult to achieve without engine detonation. That's generally what happens when you do this sort of thing in a normal internal combustion engine. However, modern variable valve timing enables the engine to leave the intake valve open during part of the compression stroke when operating in spark ignition mode. This reduces the engine's effective compression ratio, allowing it to drop to a point suitable for traditional spark ignition operation. 
This then allows the engine to smoothly transition between SPCCI and conventional operation, something other manufacturers have thus far failed to achieve. All of this should, in theory, have added up to an engine that made massive gains in efficiency as well as power and torque. Mazda claimed it would result in fuel economy improvement of anywhere from 20 to 35% over their previous engines and over pretty much anything in the marketplace and a 30% improvement in torque. Sadly, the data proved that it didn't actually work. Looking, looking at the actual peak torque and power figures and the efficiency, they were barely any better than Mazda's previous engine. In fact, they were only around about a 1% improvement, which for the most complex internal combustion engine NA, which for the most complex naturally aspirated internal combustion engine ever made in the history of mankind was a very disappointing result. What happened was this. Mazda offered this engine option to, to buyers. They said it was a 3,000 Australian dollar increase, around about 2,000 US dollar price increase, and they thought buyers would flock to it. However, almost no one bought the cars with that engine. In other words, this was a complete waste of years of development work and billions of dollars. Now, Mazda remains one of the smallest automakers on the world stage. In vehicles produced, they rank 17th in the world back in 2017, but they've since dropped a few places as their sales figures have declined since then to around 1.2 million last year. Unlike many other manufacturers, they are not part of a larger consortium, standing largely alone in a field dominated by heavy hitters like Toyota, Stellantis, the, the Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance, and the Volkswagen Group. Now, automotive journalists really raised eyebrows when they saw that Mazda dedicated so much of their resources to the ongoing development of the gasoline engine, with many saying that EVs are the future. Well, Mazda stubbornly refused to believe that was the case. In fact, they're still refusing to do so now. Now, it's not hard to see why this engine was a complete flop with buyers. Sky Active X variants were by were easily the most expensive versions of the Mazda 3 and the CX-30. And they offered only a very small increase in power, a very small increase in torque, and almost no noticeable decrease in fuel consumption. It was down by only 0.3 liters per 100 kilometers, only a couple of percent. Clearly not worth the price premium and increase over the standard engine. Even Mazda themselves admitted that customers simply weren't interested in the Sky Active X engine. Now, according to Mazda though, the technology is not a dead end. They plan on continuing to develop it. And they are, and in fact, they're continuing to invest their very scarce resources into internal combustion engine technology. Unlike almost all of its rivals who are much bigger and have much bigger budgets who have worked out that actually this is a waste of money. In fact, Mazda are so obsessed with the internal combustion engine that this is what they said only a few days ago. Perfecting combustion is what Mazda is aspiring to do. We will continue to chase after the ideal engine. He said, Mazda is still working towards making the internal combustion engine as efficient as possible as a base and adding electrification to it in the future in a multi-solution approach that we've talked about. Ultimately, you can move to EV, you can move to hydrogen, you can do all those things. So that hasn't changed, that's still there. Mazda has said that its next generation of electric vehicles won't arrive until around 2027. And considering its current electric car is a complete global flop, which has been mocked by journalists and customers, and honestly has been in a bit of an embarrassment to the electric car revolution, they continue to try to hedge their bets. But in particular, I believe that if Mazda hadn't have hedged its bets and it had have gone and taken an electric car development seriously, it could have produced a very impressive electric car. It certainly has the engineers who would have been capable of doing so, but it didn't. 
It invested a small amount in an EV, which ended up having a very poor range, only 100 miles on the EPA cycle, which customers then decided not to buy because it was expensive, and it invested a lot more money into the internal combustion engine, which no one, it turns out, was interested in. Well, now Mazda, instead of saying, we admit we made a mistake, they're continuing to dig their heels in. This is sunk cost bias in its perfect illustration. Instead of recognizing they made a poor EV and making a better one, instead, they're focusing on continuing to invest in the internal combustion engine. Obviously, this is a company that will go bankrupt at some point in time. It is too small for the Japanese government to bother bailing it out. Why do I say that? Well, Nissan's debt has been reduced to junk. Toyota has $185 billion in debt, and it will surely have a lot more than that by the end of the decade. And of course, the same concerns exist for the entire Japanese automotive industry because they have not been interested in electric cars. The amount, the percentage of EVs they sell is less than 1% of all their sales worldwide. The Japanese government has more debt than any other country in the world as a percentage of GDP. In fact, it has more debt than any other country in history, and it will not have the capacity to bail out every single one of its automakers. It is my strong view that Mazda and Nissan will be the two companies that will basically disappear over the next decade. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.